we are back here. Fabrizio Andre does his Hokagi power up and dropped his cell phone in the process. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen that one other time when Rodolfo Vieira fought Kit Dale. <laughs> he dropped his cell phone. Anyways, his best power up yet. Yeah. Fabrizio Andre, 2023 European champion, 2021 world champion. This guy's got all the accolades you can think of. Yeah, one of the most exciting competitors representing Melky Galvão Jiu Jitsu from Manaus, Brazil. State of the Amazon, uh, Hokage, just a just a beast. And you know, one of the things that makes him so exciting is his well-rounded game. He can take down, he can pull guard, he can sweep. You see flying triangles. You see, uh, you know, just amazing passes. The Hokage's got it all. Yeah, I remember one year he competed here at the Pans. He was just hitting a ton of ankle picks. It was so fun to just watch him be able to mix up his game like that, be able to. Uses takedowns, uses passing, like you said. He's extremely well-rounded and effective and attacks submissions from almost everywhere. He's facing a pretty tough opponent, Nick Salas, out of movement art jiu-jitsu. Nick's got a really good guard, really great lasso. And he gets the sweep, it looks like, on Fabricio. Scores his two points. Nick working to the back there for a second, underhooking that leg. Smart strategy to kind of, like, pin, not pin uh, Fabricio, but, like, just maintaining control there by underhooking the leg and grabbing the over the back there with the belt. Not letting Fabricio start his momentum and, you know, trying to sweep back. Fabricio's so good in this position where he's got the lapel fed. He comes up on a lot of single legs from here. He yeah. did the Europeans in the final against Alex Sodre. That was how he scored his points in that match. And look, he'll probably look to do that again with that lapel grip. Fabricio coming up to the top position, just out of bounds. And he's so good in those scramble positions yeah. too, finding underhooks, finding submissions, finding whatever he needs to to score to submit his opponent. Two minutes into this one, Fabricio Andre representing Melky Galval Jiu Jitsu, Nick Salas representing Movement Art, Fabricio up 2-0. Excuse me, Nick up 2-0 on Fabricio. I could be wrong, but I feel like Nick is was at one point a training partner with Mikey Muzumeci. Yes. And uh, helped kind of... Uh, I believe you guys black belt from Mikey. That's right, yeah. in the last few years. So... Also you know, did some training with Marcelo Garcia. There you go. Oh, nice little roll out there. I couldn't tell if that was the collar choke roll. Now he's got to watch that ankle pick. Yeah, and now Nick going on in a single. Man, I'm very impressed with Nick Salas in this match. He's not giving Fabricio any space to do anything. Oh, beautiful that. loop choke attempt by Fabricio. Off the takedown, too. Just he's got the chin strap, feeding the collar under the chin. There he goes, trying to go for that takedown. Beautiful Ochigari attempt. He's, lo he's looking at the, the scoreboard like, man, I'm not getting these points. It's just four advantages so far. Yeah, he just... He, He's, you know, attempting a lot of these takedowns just too far out of the mat. Yeah, too close to the edge. Not able to get those points. Seated guard position. Again, we talk about the dynamic uh, game in general of Fabrice Andre. Don't be surprised if he's going to be throwing up a flying triangle or double ankle pick. It looked like he was going for like a dummy sweep there. Yeah, great at wrestling up, standing up on single legs and double legs, too. Beautiful little step-through pass by Nick Salas. Great job there. Another loop choke attempt from Fabricio. Yeah, it's, he's uh, keeps dropping his head, and mm -hmm. Fabricio's got the collar, so there, there he goes again. He's got to be careful there. None of them looked like they were close to tapping Nick, but he's had to respect him. He's had to yeah. back out and change position. Yeah. Makes him create a little bit of space. And uh, even if he's not finishing him with it, it helps him recover guard. It helps him get enough space to put his leg in or foot in and set up another attack. Nick jumping for the triangle. Brice will come up and get his two points. I think Nick really wanted to be in his guard position. Playing with his lasso and his sleeve controls. Fabricio doing a great job of hiding that elbow. Both elbows, actually. It's kind of in a 
Got a very, very shallow lasso on the far left. Fabricio maintaining balance, the toes on the mat, just super balanced out right now. Yeah, it's hard to attack when Fabricio's in a posture like this. Yeah. Not, there's not really an option for a De La Hiva. Triangles and omoplatas are much more difficult with that tight elbow knee connection. Nick just maintaining really good control of those sleeves. Referee's uh, calling. Penalties for both. It's great to see the referees actually, you know, really enforcing this and you know, pushing the athletes to to fight. You know, and I understand there's you know there's a lot of strategy involved, a lot of tactics involved, and especially when it comes to open guard play, it's not very easy. But uh, yeah, we you know at the end of the day they have to be fighting for position, not just holding. Mauricio sits down on his hip. Looks like he's just trying to get free of those those grips of Nick that are really slowing him down. Now he's a little bit more free. And, and this is where uh, Fabricio tends to shine when he's got a little bit of space and he can start getting, you know, start moving quick and looking for the back of Nick on an arm bar there. Fabricio's definitely got to respect that. He's doing a good job pinning Nick's lace to the mat. Trying to get his left elbow free. Nick connected that uh, guard pass attempt to the arm bar counter beautifully. Yeah, that was very, a really very smooth. Creative submission attempt from Nick Salas. And again, sometimes it's not uh, about the attempt, but it's about the attempt setting up other opportunities. So even though he wasn't able to really capitalize on the arm, he was able to you know, create space and prevent Fabricio from passing. Back in the same posture, Nick with sort of a double lasso. He's got collar control with his left arm. Fabricio in this squatting position, just waiting to free those grips and start to get moving. Three thirty left in this featherweight black belt adult division match. Fabricio Andre, Melky Gaval Jiu Jitsu taking on Nicholas Salas, Movement Art. Winner of this match will move on to the quarterfinals, which will go down tomorrow, and we'll take on Daniel Sadler of Atos. Three minutes left, Fabricio Andre up by four advantages. Sc uh, score tied 2 2. Working towards the edge of the mat, trying to pass the guard of Nicholas Salas, which has not been an easy task to do today. Fabricio, one of three Melky Galval Jiu Jitsu athletes competing in the Black Belt Adult Divisions. We also got Diogo Hayes, Brenda Larissa. All those competitors are always, always fun to watch, always attacking for the subs and always putting on a show. Nice little throw by attempt from Fabricio. Nick recovers well. Nick looks like he just has a really hard guard to pass. Yeah. Does a great job with the grips, keeps his knees so tight to his chest. Fabricio with a nice uh, kind of stomp drag pass there. But Nick uses it as an opportunity to kind of scoop him up in the half guard there. I'm super impressed by Nick Salas. Just been able to transition from counter to counter, position to position. And, you know, dealing with the division favorite pretty easily here today. He's, he's had a lot thrown at him. He's countered everything. Yeah, Fabricio's the number one seed coming into this. Like we mentioned, 2023 European champion, 2021 world champion, 2022 Brasileiro champion. Fabricio Andre is highly accomplished, and it's not easy to control him at the, in this manner. Now Fabricio looks like he's getting a little bit, a little more progress with some of his guard pass attempts. Yeah, it's like Fabricio's making space to pass, but Nick's guard is so sticky that he just cannot capitalize on it, and um, it's, it's becoming very difficult. Hopefully. I mean, this is where experience comes into factor. This is where good coaching comes into factor. And where athletes cannot lose their patience here and stick to the game plan. Because that can be very frustrating, especially when you're tied. And, you know, knowing Fabricio, he obviously wants to win, but he's not really content on winning by advantages. So 
Now Nick's going to have to open up. He's only got about a minute left, down four advantages. He's going to have to score the two points from the sweep. There he goes with the collar drag. Trying to maybe reach for an ankle pick. He's going to have to start opening up. Yeah, Fabrizio based out by, you know, planting his shins on the floor, recovered by standing to his feet. And he's playing towards the edge of the mat. You know, again, it's kind of working that space. Circled back in. Recovering guard on Nick now. Getting a nice slow De La Hiva sweep attempt there. Now looking to kind of a leg entanglement. 27 seconds left. I thought that was a smart strategic yeah. move by Fabrizio to pull guard. Nick's going to have to pass. Fabrizio, of course, does not have an easy guard to pass by any means. Fighting towards the edge of the mat, especially in the, uh, the out of bounds area, it's an art in itself. You know, it's like knowing the space you are on the mat is so important. Not just what's happening with the match, with the techniques, but playing towards the edge is, is, is a very tricky thing to do. And people who master it can really make a very, very challenging match for their opponents. And Fabricio has been doing that this entire match here. Coming up on 10 seconds left in this featherweight qualifier, Fabricio Andre, Melky Galval Jiu-Jitsu, up by four advantages against Nick Salas and Movement Art. Very technical match. And that is it. Fabricio Andre is your winner, won by four advantages. Um, you know, four advantages doesn't really tell you the story of the entire match. It was a really, really tough one. Great performance by both athletes. You see uh, Fabricio Andre kind of shaking his head. I'm guessing he wasn't super proud of, uh, you know, not that he wasn't proud, but he was probably like, I wanted a triangle. I wanted to do something crazy. I wanted to entertain. And maybe a little disappointed in that. But congratulations, Fabricio Andre, who advances to the featherweight quarterfinals. We'll be taking on Daniel Sadler of Atos tomorrow, 10.30 a.m., Matt 13. Let's take a look at the replay. Uh, beautiful stack, or like just controlling pass attempt there by Nick. A lot of scrambles earlier on. Beautiful little flying triangle attempt there by Salas. Took a page out of Fabricio Andre's book. And then uh, Fabricio with that stomp leg drag pass. Love that pass. Just didn't.